Now, if we undergo kind of that framework and we come out with the conclusion that generally across the board, these are all fairly healthy, we move on to analyzing the funnel. Now, if we undergo kind of that framework and we come out with the conclusion that generally across the board, these are all fairly healthy, we move on to analyzing the funnel. And that is, we're talking about the purchasing funnel at this point. So the way that I set it up is I look at clicks, landing page views, add to carts, checkouts initiated, and purchases. If you set them side by side, this becomes really clear. Um, I don't have it set up that way, but we can still look at it. So you can see on my screen here, here's the clicks column. And then we have landing page views, add to carts, checkouts initiated, and then purchases over on the left. <clears throat> on this particular account though, I just realized that there is a little bit of an issue with landing page views tracking. So um, we're gonna omit that from this framework, but what we can still do is we can look at clicks to add to carts. And I wish that I could give everybody a steadfast metric to say, you know, if a 25% drop between these two metrics is healthy, but it's going to be very dependent on niche, price of the product, um, general offering, types of creatives, and so on. So you can, but you can use common sense quite a bit here to understand if this is a healthy drop off between each of these steps of the purchasing funnel. So clicks generated, we're just looking at about a week worth of data here, um, generated 5,700 clicks, call it. Almost 5,200 of those individuals added to cart. Now what that can tell us is that overall, the quality of traffic that's actually clicking on our ads and landing on the website is pretty high. The quality is there because you know that's a really high percent of individuals that are adding that are actually clicking on our ads are actually adding to the cart. Now we're starting to enter into website um, issue territory when we're seeing large discrepancies between these two numbers which is exactly what's highlighted here. So just about 5,200 people added to their cart, less than 850 actually initiated a checkout. That tells me that the quality audience that we've now sent to the website has added product to their cart, but there's a pretty steep drop off here, which would indicate that there's some sort of a website issue, whether that's the offer, a lot of the times with brands, I'll find that um, when there's a steep drop off between add to cart and initiate checkout, that actually means that there's a UX issue and there's some sort of a, a problem that's preventing people from initiating a checkout. In this case, this isn't the case with this particular client. Um, it's just a very low ticket product that people typically don't um, follow through on the purchase for. But anyway, um, this can give you some insight for a client that maybe there's something happening on your website that you should look into further because at this stage, it's essentially out of our hands, right? We can tell the client there's quality traffic being sent to the website. Now it's all on you to convert them. Um, and then we see a pretty reasonable drop off between checkouts initiated and purchases, 846 checkouts initiated, 444 followed through with the purchase. And I would call that a pretty healthy number. Around 50%, I would say, is far above um, business average on Meta. So that's a good way that you can walk through a funnel like this um, with clients and kind of showcase to them, first of all, how well is how well are their ads performing? if it's a quality audience that's being sent to the website. And second of all, if there is becoming a website issue now, here's another example of this, which um, shows a different landscape of the purchasing funnel. So we can see here 2,100 clicks, 14, 
or sorry, 21,000 clicks, 14,000 landing page views, only 576 people added to cart. A lot of those individuals, 454 of them, actually initiated a checkout. We can assume here that most of these 454 people are initiating the checkout to understand what the shipping cost is going to be on the product. And then only 80 people purchased. So again, that tells us that there is some sort of an issue with not necessarily the website in this case, likely um, an issue with shipping cost or product cost that people are finding another offering somewhere else that has a better shipping price or a better cost of product. So you, that's a very steep decline from 454 people to 80 people actually checking out or actually making the purchase. All right, before I move on, does anybody have any questions about that? I know I kind of just blew through a bunch of stuff there. Okay. All right, and that that basically rounds out how you can audit an account in, call it 10 minutes or less. It's very quick, and you can do it right firsthand with a client to help them understand if they have an agency running it or if they're running it themselves, how well things are performing. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of nuances to what I've shared here, and there's a lot that can be done to go further to explore the issues that you found. Um, some additional considerations to that would be the frequency of testing new creatives. Um, this is another reason why we can start to see frequent frequency climbing really high um, when we're not, or the client is not testing creatives enough. Um, a lot of the times we'll see this evergreen approach where clients have this understanding that they can run ads for months on end without having to switch them up because they were performing really well at one time and now they're struggling to find out the issue and it's because creative fatigue is set in and they kind of back themselves into this corner without testing any new creatives so that's something that you can look into uh, dynamic product ads versus creative based ads is another important factor in overall success of an ad account Again, a lot of the time we're seeing that clients are coming to us and there's five, six, seven, eight dynamic product catalogs all running on a on um, a variation of different audiences. But they're leveraging the dynamic product catalogs so heavily because they do perform well, but they're over leveraging them. And they need to revert back to more of a creative based approach. Um, so I think there's a time and place for both, but we're seeing more frequently than not that a lot of businesses are overusing the DPA structure. And then you can get down into the audience breakdown so you can start to look into the different, um, different audience setups. So whether they're using lookalikes, what percent of lookalikes are they using, how quality are the seed audiences to those lookalikes, the interests, that they're testing, whether they're using any broad audiences or ASCs. And a lot of this, um, you can review, I think Jonathan did a great job of explaining this on last week's call, and that recording should be in the drive. So if you want some more information on what that actually looks like on platform, um, that's a great video to review that on. But that is pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions now that we've kind of reviewed all of that? Yep. What do you mean about people overusing the DPA structure? What does that mean? What I mean by that is that they're testing, or not, they're not testing, they're creating more DPAs than they're creating creative-based ads. So they're not necessarily using still images and videos as much as they are just leveraging that dynamic product catalog feature. Um, and again, time and place for it, I, it performs great. I have it running on pretty well every single account that's um that's an e-com business but you can i find that people overextend themselves with it and they run too many ads with it got it for context i think it performs really well when paired with an asc and just leave it open 
no bid budget caps, no um, no strong arming it to avoid spending on past purchasers. You just leave it open ended, and it's kind of like a catch all at the very bottom of the funnel, and can do some prospecting if it needs to. All right. All right, so um, again, likely what's gonna be happening in the case that we're reviewing an account and a client is bringing an account to us to audit, um, the likely scenario is that there's something going on with their business 